All right. Hey there, THP 494 and 598. Matthew here. So where we left off, we had just finished making our uh, high, mid, low kind of responsive little uh, module here as a visualization, visualization tool. And that's uh, rolling right along and looking pretty good uh, and giving us kind of an excellent place to kind of start experimenting with some of these ideas in terms of what we want to do with uh, building modules that are reactive to audio. Uh, but there's some other ways that we might want to start to think about this. And namely, one of the next ones that we might want to experiment with is this idea of having something that looks kind of like an oscilloscope. Right, and this is a kind of fun, playful kind of look um, uh, that has a lot of different potential in it, right? Uh, and we can play around with what this thing is ultimately going to end up looking like. Uh, so let's start to think about what we can do to make some of this work, right? So first things first, we've already made a module that's got all of our um, border uh, properties that are associated with it. And so let's go ahead and take this. Let's copy it and paste it. I'm going to just rename this Oscilloscope. Actually, I'm just going to call it Oscope. There we go. And we're going to head inside here, and let's just go ahead and get rid of all the things that we've got in here so far. Now, I happen to know, right, if we think back to what we did very smartly over here in our local modules, we can remember that we uh, added this thing called Stream that's going to be able to allow us to pull just um, the final from our audio module. So let's take a look at why that might be useful. So we're going to go ahead and grab a select chop. And this time around, we're going to again make sure that we're writing an expression, me, mod, audio, and final. Oops, stream is what we called it, excuse me. Excellent. And so this is returning to me both the Chan 1, Chan 2, right? If we split our view here and we kind of leave ourselves in one place and let's head to our audio module so we can actually see where this is. This is actually this guy right here, our final. So this has both our left and our right channel here for us. That's excellent. That gives us a wonderful place where we can kind of like start working, right? So let's go ahead and close this. Now for our oscilloscope style uh, visualization here, we only need one channel. So I'm going to just go ahead and select one channel out of this. Perfect. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to do a little bit of rendering. Um, we're going to do some kind of simple rendering here. And what we want to try to think about is how we can kind of compartmentalize this and put it together in such a way that um, we kind of have some easier or more tidy ways that we're actually doing that rendering. And that'll make sense here as we start to work, right? So anytime we're rendering something, we know that we need a camera, right? We need a perspective that we're seeing something from. So we need to add a geometry comp to our network. Uh, and rather than just going ahead and adding and adding a geo here like this and then coming up with another kind of um, fussy way of getting our select information into our geo, what I want us to do is just right click on the output of our select. Let's go ahead and grab our geometry. And now we've automatically added an in and an out, right? When we do that, it's going to go ahead and just pipe this particular channel operator in and out for us, which is going to be really handy. So next here inside of our geo, we're going to dive in here. We're going to delete this torus. We're going to make a little more space. And now we get to start to uh, kind of dig into the fun part of what we're doing here. Now, really what I'm thinking about is how I draw this line, right? So in order to think, to think about what this line might look like uh, in a kind of like oscilloscope kind of way, I need to start with some uh, source geometry, right? I've got to start with something that I'm going to modify. Uh, and in that case, I'm going to start by drawing a line. So we'll go ahead and add our line here. And then we're going to add a chop to SOP. We're going to end all of this with a null SOP. And now we can start to actually play with some of our parameters here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my null to display and render. So it'll show up for us, because that is what I want in the world. And in our chop two, uh, what I want to do, and I might like rearrange this a little bit. Eh, that's all right. And our chop two, what I want to do is I want to think about how I can use this other channel operator to change, in some respect, what's going on here with my line. 
Right? So that's really what I'm up to here. That's the mischief that I want to get into. Now to do that, we can go ahead and grab our in uh, chop, and we can drop it right in our chop two. And we should see that nothing happens. That's okay. And that's because we need to make a, a few changes in terms of specifying what it is that we want to change. So what we want to do is we want the channel scope to correspond to one of the channels here in our uh, in chop. So here we've got chan one. That's really what we want to deal with. So I would like chan one Right, that's the channel I want to watch. And I want to apply that uh, right to my attribute. What's the attribute that I want to change? I want to use that to change the point Y position. Now we can see that I've got a slight mismatch here, right, that's going on. And I have a couple different ways that I could uh, kind of noodle with this. Uh, I might be able to resample my chop to fit my SOP, but that's not totally what I want, right? Because that's going to resample my chop and not going to resample my SOP. Right? And what I want to do is I want to have one sample for every point. Now if I go back and I look at my line, I can see here that I really only have two points. Right? And my in, right, if I middle mouse click over here, I can see that I'm actually, I've got 735 samples that I'm dealing with typically. Right, and that's that's part of where my, my mismatch is coming, is that I need a number of points that corresponds to the number of samples that I have over here. So how might I think about that? Well, what I'm going to do to solve that problem is uh, I'm just going to write a, a small little expression, right? So I'm going to start with operator in one, and that needs to make sure, I need to make sure that's inside of quotation marks. Whoa! And what I want is I want the num samples. I want the number of samples that are inside of this. And that's going to give me 735. So let's middle mouse over here. I've got 735 samples. I would love to have 734, 735 points. Excellent. And now we can see that my points over here uh, all line up. So I've got a matching number of samples and points. So I am off to the races here in terms of thinking about what it is that I want to do and how I want to get this kind of set up and, and working well. So that's looking pretty fine and dandy so far. Let's bounce out here a little bit. We can see that's moving and grooving. Wonderful. That is fantabulous. Now there is one thing that I'm noticing, and that's the, the fact that I'm still starting at 0, 0, and I'm going over to 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, excuse me, <laughs> get my Cartesian coordinates correct. Um, and that might make a little problem for me, but let's hold off on that for just one second. Um, before we get too far, let's make sure that we add a constant material, and let's go ahead and drop that right onto our geo here. That's our material. Now we can see that makes our line nice and white. Let's go ahead and add a render. So we're going to add a render top here that's going to allow us to actually render all of this business. And if we turn it on here in the background, we can see that, lo and behold, we've got a line that's working pretty well so far. Now, this is uh, getting there, um, but I might want to think of changing some of the dimensions of this slightly. Uh, and I might think about uh, doing that a couple of different ways. Let's start. Well, first of all, let's just make a little floating uh, window for us here so we can view this. And to do that, I right-clicked on my render and I hit View. I'm just going to scale this down a little bit and drop it over here on the right so it'll stay with us as we move around. So first things first, I might head here over here to my line and I might change the origin point for this, right? I might move this back a little bit and make it like negative one. So now my line stretches from negative one to positive one. That's a little bit better, right? We've got a kind of uh, better distribution there. And we'll wait for this music to restart so we can see how that looks slightly. Okay, that's looking pretty okay. I think I want this to be like a little bit wider, personally. We can see that the, the height of this is looking pretty okay, right? Like we don't clip too much. We mostly stay within our, the field of view of our camera. So I don't necessarily want to change too much there. I've got a couple of options, right? So I could change the line. I could actually move the line around. A little bit there, or I could come over here to my geometry and I could scale the horizontal position of my geometry, right? So if I could, if I think about coming over here into X and Y, right, we can scale here 
and we might only want to go up mm, maybe to like one point maybe just 2.0 oh, 2.05 looks pretty good right so this is one way for us to solve part of that problem now that looks like a little bit too noisy in terms of its height here so let's take the the y scaling and let's turn that down just a skosh make it, maybe make that like 0.8 Now I could do all of that in my line, of course, right? I could certainly think about how I uh, manipulate all that information in the geometry, but I can also think about how to do some of that manipulation here in the geo to simplify some of that. Okay, so this is looking pretty swanky and pretty good. We can go ahead and close our little floating window here. I'm gonna turn off my display, uh, and then I'm actually just gonna connect an out to this. And let's move this over here a little bit. I'm gonna turn on my out, and then what I want to do is, um, the kind of mischief that I'm up to next is I want to think about how this looks uh, beyond just kind of this uh, initial kind of very kind of frenetic, frantic kind of coloring. So uh, a part of what I'm up to there is I'm going to think about adding a little bit of feedback to this. So we'll make another simple feedback network. We've done a ton of these. So I'm going to start with uh, feedback first. I want to use a little bit of blur to soften this out just a little bit. I want to add a level next. So I can control some of this. And then way how down here at the end, uh, what I want to do is I want to add a composite. Because I'd like to composite my original with this. Now we need to remember that in our composite, our operand needs to be set to add. And then we need to actually complete the feedback loop. Whoo! And clearly we need to turn down our level. Right, we need to turn down our opacity just a little bit to make sure that we don't get that like constant override there. Right, Ooh, there we are. That's looking pretty good. We might come into our range, or in our pre, excuse me, in our black level, we might just knock that up a little tiny bit. And now we can start to play with, what is the color of this actually? So I might come over here and start, try like a green, for more of a, an oscilloscope kind of feel. I'm gonna turn off my display here and just view this. Right, and depending on what you're after, this may or may not be quite right. This feels like there's still just like a little bit too much opacity happening. I want just a kind of hint of that. I don't want that to persist quite as much. Okay, yeah, there we go. So that's looking pretty good. Now, our audio signal here, um, we might think about if we want to smooth that or filter that in some way, we certainly could do that if we wanted to. But this is certainly uh, the beginning of a really interesting and fun kind of jam. Now, one other thing that we might add here to our feedback to make it a little more playful is we might take some of this, and I don't know where the right place for this is yet, but we'll, we can experiment. And let's add a transform here. In our transform, let's go ahead and take our scale and let's reduce our scale a little bit and we might want to translate that up slightly. Ooh, there we go. That's moving like just like a little too fast, I think. Whew, yeah, oh my goodness. Let's scale back. There we go. Right now we've got kind of a drifty, a more drifty kind of feeling. That's interesting. We might turn that way up for a second, or we might experiment with what that means to try and figure out what the right kind of feeling for that is. We might also think about, you know, what if that doesn't fall here in line, but what if that falls maybe after our level? Maybe that's the last step. I'm going to insert. Here's a little trick for you. So I want to be able to plug this signal in right into this existing wire. So I'm just going to put in a null here and then swap right into the null. So this is an opportunity to experiment a little bit, see the thing that, see if you can find what's interesting to you. 
and kind of play with what that might mean. Right, this has got feels like it's kind of falling away as it disappears. Certainly there's, you know, rate rotation also for us to think about. That's another way for us to play with how how things change over time. You know, for today I think I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that out, but I encourage you to play with that a little bit more to try and find something that is uh, the right kind of jam for you. Let's go ahead and do one last thing, and let's take uh, our feedback blur, our level. We're just going to box select all of these things. We'll collapse those. We'll call this feedback, because now we've got a lovely little feedback module that's doing all of our work for us. If we take a look at this base, we can see that out one would be would act as our display. So let's take a look at what's going on in here. Oh, we've got an out two. Let's make sure that we do a little bit of reorganizing, so this is nice and tidy. And we might rename this out one. And let's view it, there we go. Yeah, perfect. So now we've got a little module that's actually responsible for our feedback there, that way we don't have to clutter our network with it. We can bring our out over here. We can close that up. All right, so that's our first step in terms of building our kind of oscilloscope. Uh, visualizer here. Oh, we don't see it here outside of the network. Let's just make sure that, oh, here we're looking for BG. Let's just change the name of our out operator to BG for background. And there it is. And we should see when we back out here of our modules, okay, these are stack one right on top of one another. Let's go ahead and fix some of this first so that we know that it's going to be correct for the rest of what we're doing. Um, we're going to go ahead and align this left to right. And we want to make sure that there are only two per line. Excellent. So now when we make the next ones, they'll fill us in just the way we expect. All right. So what's up next? Uh, next, we're going to move beyond kind of thinking about how we visualize something in this kind of simple oscilloscope kind of way. And we're going to push a little bit harder into looking at something a little more complicated. And we'll start by looking at a little piece of kind of uh, kind of topography, uh, audio spectrum kind of mapping that looks something like this, which will be a lot of fun and plays with some of the existing ideas we've already started to noodle around with. All right, I will see you guys on the flip side.